Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sesternino back here with one more check-in uh, with our international uh, survivor chief correspondent, Shannon Gus. Shannon, how are you? I'm great. I'm witnessing history. I've got my villain's buff as a little bit of like a, I got a villain's buff and also for this momentous occasion. Yes. Okay. Well, what an honor this is. I'm I'm so tickled today to get a chance to talk to one of my survivor heroes, of course, that he put on a clinic for us all in 2023 as the star of Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Please welcome to the podcast george mladenov george how are you hello rob hello shannon i feel like hello. this is closing the loop i've i was the kid that watched you in the amazon i thought you reminded me of someone that i could you know play survivor like and here we are well wow george what a nice thing to hear and george uh thank you for all of the entertainment uh over these many many weeks uh it was a joy to watch you play the game your majesty yes you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> yes george how are you oh i'm good i'm kind of like this is this is kind of like the final kind of like piece of Heroes v Villain season um, media that I'm going to do, but um, I, I, I'm 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 good. It's it's um, it, it's strange. Um, I think I find it a lot more difficult to transition back into a routine after it's finished airing rather than when you get out of the game. So I think I'm at that kind of like point in my life where I'm going back to a normal kind of like George life, whatever that might look like. But um, I'm very happy to do this final treasure for you rob and yes Shannon. well i appreciate it so much and i've really i've been looking forward to this for some time so i'm so glad that uh, we're able to do this uh, shannon thank you for putting this together yeah well i just thought the whole time you know your love for george was such a feature of the season and we did manifest george being a fallen angel even though it had happened in the past but we were seeing it in the present and you guys getting to meet. That's why we're here, right? We're producing the podcast on air as always. And this is it. This is yeah. This is vibes. We didn't want to spend very much time at all in backstage. I said, let's yeah, just go, like, let's just go on here? and, and yeah, talk it really. through. So uh, this is just uh, super exciting uh, for me. I hope I'm uh, not, come, not coming across as too starstruck, George. Um, I, I hope I don't come across starstruck either. But yes, um, no, for not, an old codger did, like I, me, I well, you're not that old. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> you were an old boy, George. How old are you? Well, no, I age was, anymore I, to you? I was an old codger on my tribe, and I'm 33. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. love that as a 30 year old. <laughs> as a new yes. 30 year old. Um, so, George, I just want to also say that I uh, listened to your five hour plus deep dive uh, with Shannon Gus, and, and I had an uh, even deeper appreciation for your game. And I just find myself, I, I was so excited to hear about your book at the end of the podcast because I just feel like that your philosophy on not just survivor, but life, I think is so fascinating. And I think it's so counterintuitive to so much of what we sort of like have thought about Survivor over the years and even about life of the I, I feel like that you practice just um, uh, just I, I, I'm uh, coming up with a, a hard time of uh, extreme honesty of like uh, like in extreme uh, truthfulness in, in a lot of ways where you talked about how so many other players were spending so much time like wasting energy and sort of like, oh, we have to try to trick this person into thinking this and, and we're going to spend a lot of time sort of like coddling our enemies so that they think that we're with them, but we're not really with them, where your approach is just so direct and so interesting. Mm. Thank you. I'm not sure if that was a statement or um, a question, but yeah, um, no, no question. Yeah. I'm just saying that I, but I, and I find myself that uh, like re thinking often now in life about, but how would George handle this situation? 
Yeah. Um, well, let me know the situation and I can get back to you. But uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just think I've been I've been watching these past US uh, US Survivor seasons and I've just been so bored, Rob. Um, like, I'm not going to mm-hmm. lie. Um, outside of a few kind of like handful of characters, like, um, you know, Carolyn's fantastic. Yam Yam's great this time. And then I look at the rest of them and I go, what the fuck are these people doing? <laughs> like, seriously, it's just like... It's like watching paint dry. When when a major storyline of a season of Survivor is a showmance, you know the show's hit rock bottom. Hey, that like, was a seriously. special showmance. <laughs> like, and, and, not, and it, no it's just showman. like the best thing about Survivor 43 for me was when I missed six episodes because of the World Cup in Qatar. Like, oh. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's make, let's make so this it's, about it's, you. It's we, don't like, to, we don't need to. Yeah, I, I know. Us. Like, I've gone on a different tangent, but it's it's just like. <laughs> You know, I, th- I think you've hit this, like, un- unfortunately, you've hit this kind of, like, point in the the fandom where, like, you've got to play like a game bot, otherwise it's unconventional. And then mm-hmm. um, the good thing about Australian Survivor, because it has such a mixed bag of cast, it doesn't let the game produce that kind of shitness that's become, like, the level of acceptable game playing. Um, and for, for me, when I'm just someone from like Western Sydney, that's just how we are, Rob. So when I got catapulted there as a person off the street, um, it, it tended to work for me because I stuck to my guns and I was true to myself. And I think like, I, I always lol Shannon, when you, I always heard you say on the podcast and you're like, oh no, this is exactly what George is just like in real life. And that was my secret. That's what worked for me. Whilst you get other people that just kind of become like, I don't know, they just try and pander to the common bottom mm-hmm. and it's just boring gameplay and boring TV. Yeah, well, I think yeah, that you're onto something when you uh, mentioned, you know, Carolyn and uh, Jam Jam from the US season that, you know, when you talk about how like you are yourself, that there are so many people on Survivor that are trying to play all these angles and trying to uh, pretend to be like this person that they are not, that I do think that you come across while, okay, I don't know necessarily if you are coming across as like the person that somebody should necessarily trust the most, but I think that also you come off as incredibly authentic and not like that you are, you know, pretending to be somebody that you're not. And I think that goes a long way. Yeah. Well, thanks, Rob. But like, yeah, it's just like, I like I, I I kid you not on Survivor forty three I could barely remember anyone's name or what they look like and then it, it's just like you, if you're going to categorize like the cast in a certain way they were all bloody the same and then you know it, it's 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 good to get a bit of difference in terms of like the characters that play Survivor and I'm glad that I'm one of them. Mm-hmm. Well, I think something that I got from the deep dives and I got a lot from these deep dives. I felt like it was one of the most like enlightening deep dive series I had. And something I thought was interesting that you kind of shared with Liz was, like, Rob, you talk about this like um, kind of like radical transparency. And in ways, I feel like there's like almost like a, a simplification of the game for, for both of you, like the building blocks that then you allow, like allows you to create the game. So from you and Liz, I found it was like, if I kind of vibe with you, and if I see something, especially with you, if I see something in you, and with you, I think it's like a respect thing, you know, like Stevie versus Fraser as an example. If you can have that respect, mm. then you become like a workable number for me. And I felt like Liz had that as well. It was like Stevie wasn't necessarily on my side, but I liked him. That became an option for me. So I think that even seeing the way that both of you break it down to almost like this, this simple game. And I think that um, Australian Survivor allows room for that in a way US Survivor probably doesn't anymore because it's too constricted to almost see the game that open. But I think the way that, that I see that both of you saw the game in kind of different ways was like, even numbers aside, and I know that the merge move for you was like such a numerical win in that way, but it's like, can I work with you? Do I kind of see that level of respect? What kind of player are you? And then once I have that as a building block, you become like a workable number for me. And then for you, it's like, now we start to build to these like massive strategic moves. And I think that's interesting as well, because the Australian game allows space and time for that. Um, and I think that's how like we saw the whole game. It's not like, are you a workable number for me? Oh, but you don't have a vote. You know, it's simple to I like you, I don't, I respect you, I don't, and now I, I build you up. So I really got that, I think, out of like several deep dives through the season. Yeah, that that's good. Like the the thing on the time of the game though, I actually don't think it makes that much of a difference. Um the the fact that it's accelerated is would is probably 
um, like for someone like me, that would be a good thing because there's less time for dilly dallying around, particularly mm-hmm. at the start of the game. So, um, I, I, were you I, dilly dallying? You were in hospital and then you were voting people out every <laughs> second night. It wasn't a lot yeah. of dilly dallying. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you do get a lot of rest days, and then it's just like sometimes, like you, you do want things to get moving um, rather than just resting along in camp. And I think what happened, like. I was a bit tired when I did that deep dive as well, but like we, uh, if we probably had like three rest days in the first two weeks and then like in those three rest days, it just gave time for like Fraser to get scooped up by the boys, for instance. It's like, oh, we'll literally pick up this person without a personality and then he will attach himself to us. So it's just like, it, it, it's like sometimes it's good when things get moving, like, but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know what, what brought on this tirade, Rob. You said well, well, hello, I your d- majesty. <laughs> oh, uh, I, yeah. Um, look, George, that I just think that you're so fascinating to watch on TV. And, and really, I uh, was captivated even all through the five hours because I feel like that you are just not a BSer. And it's so refreshing because I feel like that, in, and not to like pick on survivors, but you know, you talk to all these people that come through the experience and like, oh, everybody was great. We were all great. Everybody's great. Everybody's friends. Uh, <laughs> we love this guy. Uh, like, uh, you know, bless his heart. Um, but even in the deep dive, that you talk about, yeah, that person is really like, I don't like that person. That person's an a hole. Uh, and really what's, what's so wonderfully refreshing about you, George, is that the people that are your friends, you are, you know, fiercely loyal to, and the people that you're not like, you don't waste any sort of energy on like pandering to the people who are not part of your group. And I I just think that that's incredible. And, And you don't like, you don't hate them. Like, uh, like in the game, like these people that you're not working with, it's like, I'm not going to waste any time, like trying to trick you into anything. What if you want to talk about, so let's like, Hey, come to me with something real. But until then, like, uh, is like, uh, I'm not bothering with you. Yeah. Well, look, it's, it's just a, the, the whole dummy plan thing. It's just, um, th- there's gotta be like a reason for it. Like, like. The, the 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 one thing that always got me was like Simon had this obsession with his kind of like, oh, what are you going to tell the other side? It's like, well, why why is just tell them nothing and not not an option? You know, yeah. it's just like it, you can. It, it's not that hard for people to realize there are kind of like different groups and factions, and sometimes you're not working with the other side or not at that particular point in the in the game. So it's just like, it, it, I, I think back to like the the episode seven tribal council. It's like the 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 guy a had like obviously was the target which he was so oblivious to reading the room around him he didn't see him um and then b it's just like walks up to me to tell me the most stupid dummy plan it's like on what on what planet does like a dummy plan sound real when it's just like an obvious lie You're like i would have a lot more respect for someone if they kind of like looked me in the eye and said oh i'm actually going to vote for you tonight you know and i i've got the capacity to pull it off and then like, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just a different way of not closing a door. I think on our season, the one, like, the one person that I never kind of had that door closed to was Nina because she had a very kind of, like, conceptual way of looking at the game. Um, and it's also, and I think Liz kind of had the same attitude where it's like we didn't want Nina to go because it was always kind of like a, a backdoor to work with her. And then I had mistrust with her for like different reasons or whatnot during the game, Haley's deception or whatnot. But it's just like, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, it, it, I, I think having worked in politics, it just kind of like takes a lot of the crap out. You know, it's like you're either with me or you're not. You're you're either going to cut a deal with me or you're not. Um, you either count as a vote or you don't. And then it just kind of like takes all of the crap out of it. It's just like, you know, I, I just think back to like when I like I'm not I'm not even a member of a political party anymore. But when I was um, like I, I would I would see branch members in the street and then I would offer to buy them a coffee. It's like, why am I doing that? I don't know, because they're branch members. They're important. <laughs> Eventually, their vote will count in a pre-selection. And when these people have to think in the pre-selection, who am I going to vote for? I like George. He always buys me a coffee. He always talks to me on the phone. You know, I ask him to come to my house and give me advice and he doesn't or 
you know, some MP that will walk past them on the street and not know their name. Like, that's a kind of like, I don't know. It's just kind of like I have that attitude to the game as well. It's like people can can be important. They have a usefulness or they don't. And that's just how I look at it. Yeah, it's just such a fun uh, gameplay style to watch. And it is really refreshing. And uh, w- one of the reasons why I uh, just love watching you on the show do you feel like that part of it is that people are just so brainwashed uh, from watching Survivor as a viewer of like, oh, here's the real plan and here's the fake plan. And it's like, OK, well, now I'm sort of like trained that I have to like trick the other person into buying into a fake story because that's what you would watch on television where it's like, is it this going to happen or is this going to happen? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's just kind of like it, it's, it's just what people expect. So I, I, I think... When, when you get to that game bot level of casting, like everyone's going to play in the same certain style of way. And like the, the default is to do as little as possible. And like not only is it highly unentertaining, creates bad TV and it's not memorable, but it's just like, it, it, it's just what, 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 like you got to tell yourself what is the point of doing something. So it, it's just like, it, unless that's the person going home, like you, you're still going to have some kind of like bad blood on your hands or someone's hands of a dummy plan. Cause it's like, you know, walking back into camp and going, Oh yeah, that was a dummy plan. Get over it. It's like, it's still a case of like, you know, like uh, uh, you're, you're better off having an us v them situation. And then you can actually offer a piece like, like mechanism or maneuver at a certain point in the game. You know, it, it, it's just kind of like, I, I never walked up to Nina and, and, and said to her, like, I'm just like, I don't want to keep using examples of kind of like what I was doing in, in Samoa, but it's like, I never walked up to Nina and said, oh, you know, this is what we're doing here and there. Like I would, I would do it to Simon because he was a mole and a very obvious mole. Um, and then, you know, it's just like me doing that to Simon ends up saving me in a miracle situation, but it's just like, I, I would tell Nina, we're not on the same page here and I'm not working with you, but you know, I like you, I like your mum. you know, you never know, but just tonight don't have misunderstandings and then, you know, don't vote for me, you know, just whatever, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a better position to have someone in. And then when I walk up to Nina with three seconds notice, you know, it's time to go for Shawnee. She's got a night or she's being voted out. It's like, sure. It's like Nina doesn't question my intent once because I've been frank mm-hmm. with her the whole time. So it's just like, it's just a way of kind of like doing things and why. And I think that's kind of like the, the, the key to, you know, this, the, to just in, in the way of just dealing with people sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And also then it's like when a Shawnee uh, gets voted out, you know, it's not like uh, she comes away with like, oh, how could George have done this? Like our our friendship. It's like, okay, no, you she knew like what you what you were about, like to start and understands it's not like a personal thing when you turn around and vote for that person because, you know, you haven't built this relationship on like, hey, aren't we like best friends and uh, like uh, have like, uh, you know, this like uh, undying love for each other. Yeah, look, I think the, the the example of that is probably how someone like Geordie just views, you know, the, the like the, the the what I I actually took an issue to what he was doing to Simon. Just on a like, if you're going to bring in kind of like morals and ethics into the game, it's just like you you, you know what the game's about, but it, it's just like you know, I I I never like I've never once like said to someone, oh, I'm your best friend. I'm your mate. We're going to be like groomsmen and stuff like that at each other. Not even Jerry. You know? No, but I was, I was good to Jerry. You know, if you think about it and I was, I was always honest in terms of like, I don't walk up to someone and go, Oh, you know, we're best mates forever when we're not, you know? So it's just like, it, no, it, I was going to say that to you, George. What do you mean? <laughs> Sorry. No, I was going to say that we were going to be best mates. Oh yeah, you're okay, Rob. You're fine. You, you, <laughs> you, you'd be good to go with, but it, it's just like, yeah, you're. It, it, it's 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 a case of like expectation setting. So if you set the bar at kind of like your best mates, and then the and then something goes wrong, that'll have kind of like extreme resentment. And then I've have I've had to live through like 
you know, I'm I'm acutely aware. I've ha- I've had to live through resentment the first time I played, but that wasn't mm-hmm. because of like like that. That's just like a real extreme example where I had just shit people who'd never like. That's the other extreme of Australian Survivor. Like people who've never seen the game before and think it's a game of you know like mateship and friendship and glory and then if you do anything wrong you're dead forever and then they just keep like poisoning themselves in the jury when it's just you know one person emmet so it's just like when i when i look at shawnee i had a great relationship with shawnee you know i i considered shawnee a friend you know shawnee and i would talk every single night when we'd be sleeping together but like i I don't recall shawnee to me or me to her ever you know professing our bffness forever it's just like we knew there was a bit of business going on. Um, the longer we played in the game together, the stronger we were just as individual players and an alliance. And it worked for us, you know, until the point when Shawnee got physically weak, very, very physically weak and depleted. And then I worked out her true intention, which wasn't really ever involving me. And then like the, the, the thing is, and you go, and if you look at why it kind of worked for me and why it didn't for Shawnee is I had a great relationship with Shawnee and Liz. Like in 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 that thruple, like my direction went both ways. And when it became clear to me, like for Shawnee in that thruple, it just it stopped turning to my direction and she was just professing a love for Liz. And I'm like, well, this isn't really a thruple anymore. And I can always pivot back to being a couple while Shawnee couldn't. So it's like, yeah, I I don't know. Like it's it's just a it's just it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Just in terms of like how, I, I think just how people interpret things really comes down to their context, you know, and all of it comes into play. And then it's just, it, it's just not just kind of like ethnic demographic, but it's just class background. I think that's a really big one, particularly in Australian survivor and just life experience. And then people that kind of have had to like really grind for a living you really have a different take on life to someone who's a model or, you know, gets their dad to post pictures on the Instagram. Random in terms of their dad. But I think that, you know, what we're saying like about that transparency is like what we said with Simon, when Simon was at the merge, it was between, you know, two not great options because no one, you know, Simon had had really no one, but it was between like the heroes who had kept like leading him on a string, which I thought was like way more insulting, you know, and kept like rejecting him versus you who it was like always open you know and it might have been antagonistic at times but it felt more even and it felt more genuine um and yeah at least he knew where he stood I thought that that was a much better option for Simon than yeah the, the, the duplicity and almost like the manipulation that they were trying to do with him so I think that that works but I also think that we should be like clear about because I was going to ask like the KG rules you know like we have the VR rules but I feel like it's kind of like what we used to say with Tony you know Tony was a unicorn and, and as are you George like I feel like we would say oh we'll just do this like Tony but no one could you know Tony only Tony can do that it's actually not I feel like super applicable to everyone else so- because the, the type of game George plays is that like that type of brazen game. I don't know. I don't think everyone can go out and, and do the same thing. I think yeah. what you have to do is just, I know it sounds as cliched as possible, but given there are people applying for survivor right now in Australia and the U S but you, you just have to be your best version of you. Like that is, that is all you can do. And if, if like your best version of you isn't, going there and doing nothing like that's just a wasted opportunity and Mm -hmm. we'll never see you again playing survivor and then for everyone everyone, like for everyone watching you know it's like there there are people that go on there and they're like oh i wish i could have done x y or z or it's like well bro you could have done it you know like no, no one no one told me what to do the first time you know i didn't go out there saying glory or death but i told myself i'm gonna give it a red hot crack and then it kind of like, you know, I was a first time player the first time I played as well. You know, it's, it's just like I said, I've been watching this show since the year 2000, you know, I, I, I'm not going to go there and do nothing basically. Yeah. Well, I do feel like that so much of U.S. Survivor is geared towards the game is like hide under the radar, be under the radar. Like there is nobody comes into the game with the like uh, uh, game plan that you have in terms of like, Hey, I am going to go out there and I'm going to, you know, be 
the big target. Everybody, you know, get behind me. I'm going to be the big target. Everybody in U.S. Survivor certainly plays to try to not lose. Yeah, and like that, I and maybe that's why Jeff Probst has put these game breaking twists in because it, it it's just like but don't get Shannon started, George. If 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 you're playing to not lose, then you do need really random things like half the tribe pick out a rock and then you know another two people don't vote or vote in a different way. So like I I I I I look at the. I, I truly think the issue with the latest season of Survivor is just the casting, to be honest with you. Um, you're casting people that all think the same, basically. It it, it doesn't matter, like, in, in terms of game mechanics, you can navigate around them. Um, I, 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 I don't know who was saying, like, I, th- I think I was just reading something this morning. I don't know what it was, but it, it's just like, you, you can actually navigate your way around things and, you know, try and control the luck or get the edge in your favor. But when, when everybody thinks the same with that not lose mentality, Rob, then, then it, 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 you, you get the product that was served up in survivor 43, like, mm-hmm. and, and it, it's not fun. Cause it, it's just like, I, I, I can't think of like a time when, yeah, I was away having a great time at the world cup, but then, I flew straight back. I flew to the U S for the first time to go to survivor functions and parties. And then I was just like, you know, have have I missed anything? No. And then it's just like, you know, I I remember looking at that second last episode, not knowing who three of the final five actually were. And I saw the first seven episodes of the season and I'm just like, who are these people? Well, let me ask you, George, because I feel like that uh, this is, again, um, something, a a unique take, and I would expect nothing less from you. You feel like that it's more the conservative players in U.S. Survivor that are the biggest issue, more so than the actual, like, uh, all all of the wild twists that are thrown in there? Or you think it's uh, both things are uh, issues? No, I think it's the casting, to be honest with you. Um, the yes, the twists this are wild. Take. Very, very yeah. wild, very wild on season forty-four, um, but not necessarily breaking the entertainment aspect of it. Yeah. Um, what what breaks it, and then like I again, I don't have beside behind the scenes info, but you look at Franny and her boyfriend's about to go to a tribal council. She's standing on a pole. She's got an immunity necklace. Get off the damn pole, darling. Mm -hmm. Get off the pole. Your ally on the other side is safe. Okay? That's not it. That's not Jeff Probst, game mechanics as executive producer, resulting in Franny losing Matt. That's Franny thinking about a sandwich. Get off the pole. You know, I don't think it's it's uh... like I, I look at that situation there and then I go and then it's like, what, what, what are people getting upset about? They're, they're getting upset about the fact that outside of Carolyn, who is one of the greatest casting decisions ever, mm-hmm. Yam Yam, Jam Jam, who is fascinating as a person um, and playing the game quite interestingly, like outside of that, I can barely name anyone. Mm-hmm. And and then yeah. the only the only storyline of very note, Australian the only story, Survivor-esque. The, on, the only storyline of note was a love story which really didn't interest me. Mm-hmm. And, I can't imagine it did. And the one of the lovers couldn't be bothered saving her own partner when she was immune. Mm-hmm. But George, we got we got a lot of questions about how you do in, in US Survivor. And you'd play it differently. Because okay, again, like you play things differently to you're a very different person to most of the world. And that's why you're awesome casting. But like for most people, like their sense and logic and doing the conservative thing, especially within the craziness of twists, like are they going to be the biggest character? Maybe not, but it might behoove them in terms of their demographic, like in terms of the game mechanics, like there would be reasons and sense, even if it's not super fun. And I did my deep dive with Matt and I feel like that probably spoke to where he was at in, in, in his game. And I'm like, if you'd won, we would have seen it as like a very sensible win. And it was it wasn't going to be the King George win. But then in terms of US Survivor, like, do you think, like you're saying, there's always a way that you can get out. Do you think that's a game that you could work with? Like a game where 
this is a relationship that I've pulled over. This is a number for me. Oh, that, that uh, they don't have a vote, you know, like a game of I've created my army. The army's in a different camp, you know, like that randomness. I'm, and again, like you have been up against a ton of non non elimination twists and you have managed that I think really, really well. But I think that the space, because you have like long-term strategies, because it's about building power, because it's this big extreme game, I would be interested to see it in the U S but you can't be thinking like, that's a game that equally is much, you know, what? like it's a very different game. And I don't know that, you know, and I'm sure you do amazingly well with it, but it's, it's tough. Like it's tough for the players. Yeah. But do you know, do you know what's tough? Like, you know, I, I think for like the, 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 the tough is creating a winner story when there just isn't one there, Shannon. And we saw that when Erica won and I can, I can guarantee you this. Oh, well, you know, probably Gabler as well, but like, I can tell you this, if, if something happens out there, it gets shown, okay? It's that simple. If there's nothing happening, you're not going to show it. And even worse, if the person, when they're standing in, a, in an IV or a confessional, if they don't have the, like, the capacity to explain what they're doing, if, and if that's doing nothing deliberately, then nothing gets shown. It, it, it's just like, but unfortunately, like, when the safest thing to do is do nothing and then you get a bunch of people that do nothing, sometimes people that do nothing do get to the end and there is no crime or injustice if if their story doesn't get showed because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's that simple. Yeah, I think it's very interesting to compare. And so much of the podcasting I did with Shannon was comparing what was happening in Australian Survivor and comparing with what was going on in US Survivor, where you and your motivation were, were clearly, you know, as stated, like glory or death. I'm going to make the moves to win the game. Whereas I think that in us survivor, the win conditions for the players, yes, there there's a prize, but we really don't even bother with that. It's really about like, what are you getting out of your experience? It's survivor, the experience, and even like the big moves that we see the players make like Jesse in survivor 43, uh, that that move is sort of like, we have, or get the backstory. The motivation is like, I, I, I don't want to make this move but I have to do it for my family. And that's just very different from the type of gameplay we see from you where I am making this big move because the, the only acceptable outcome to me is to be crowned the winner of this game because I want to win. Yeah, I look, the, the, only, the, only, the only difference is in terms of how it would be interpreted. So I, I think no matter what you'd get with, a US survivor cast is you'd have a jury that understands the game because there's no, like it, sometimes, you know, you, the, the Australian survivor casting is not the best. Um, it has improved out of sight recently. Uh, but like, I, I, I had to live through it, you know, my first jury when. No spoilers you know, We're covering that season. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Um, let's just go on a different tangent then, or let's edit that bit out. Well, no, we know that we know yeah. that you, <laughs> we, we, we know that you, we know yeah. that you come second, but no, no, oh, okay, spoilers. Good, good. Ron's going to watch the whole season. Yeah. Yeah. So we it, know it, you for next day. That part was pretty clear in Heroes versus Villains. Oh, good, good. So, um, yeah. So We're ready it, for the just, prequel. Yeah. Yeah. The, the fun prequel, but, um, yeah, I, 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 I think there's a there's a there's a there's a question of kind of like I I, I don't know like like ju juries kind of get into certain mindsets or mentalities. Um, I, the the most critical thing is the order that people get there. Like that's the lesson I learned the first time. Um, so it, and it, it it's it's not necessarily how they got there, but the order they get there, and it's a it's a very difficult kind of like balancing game when you're out playing the game. And then, you know, if, if, if I look at kind of like what happened to me in Samoa and then I realize haley has been screwing me over for three tribal councils in a row and then Nina's the one telling me this and I survived by, you know, a miracle because people believe Simon more than Haley because Haley pulled off communicating with the minority as opposed to Simon who was ramping it up thinking he was a super mole when, you know, there were two moles. So it, it's just like, 
in that situation, I have to prioritize eliminating Hailing, who was mm. my end game plan. And then I tell myself, I, I can't control the order that Haley's going to get to the jury. She just has to get there then. And it was kind of similar with Shawnee, but like sometimes it's like you, the, the jurors just get a pack mentality. It's kind of, it, it, it is, it is kind of like how an electorate thinks in, in when they're, when they're going, you know, uh, what, what are they called in the U S not an electorate, um, a, like a congressional district or something. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So it, it's just like, they get kind of like pack mentalities on the influencing factors. And sometimes it's just kind of like th they, they get influenced by individual players or they get like in, in that case, it would like, it, it, it will be kind of like the game that's unfolding before them. Um, you know, bitterness can fester and spread. They start getting their own theories on certain matters, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a pickle one, but every, every jury is different as well. It's just kind of like, so it's like, yeah, I don't even remember why we brought up this tirade again, Rob. <laughs> well, we we're talking about the difference between in a U.S. Survivor season and people's like uh, motivation. Oh, when they're going, oh, I'm doing this. Yeah, look, I don't know. Would that would that resonate with me? I I I, I don't think it would, to be honest. But maybe that's just like an Australian attitude. Yeah, it's, it's like just very the whole few players. I, I like that. You've never like liked when, the stories. <laughs> and on U.S. Survivor, when I he I had cancer when I was three. It's like. Who cares? Most people care when people like. I think that's a you thing, George. I think people care about the the the, ca the kid cancer stories. That's always been George hates the the stories. Maybe um, if they cast more characters rather than people that had cancer as a criteria to get on Survivor, mm -hmm. then you get a more interesting cast. I mean, I, I like in terms of the casting. I think that this is an interesting thing because this podcast is always US versus AU and hot takes, which George has continued the tradition of, which I appreciate. But like, yeah. I, I mean, I I see parts of it, and I also think. I think maybe we get to a similar place, but you and I maybe disagree on the basis because it, like I talked this week um, about like fear based production. Like I'm so scared there's going to be a boring episode. Let me throw in a twist. And I think that, you know, possibly the, the way the game is being constructed makes people play with definitely huge constriction and then some amount of fear. And then like, that becomes like a self-perpetuating cycle. Like the way that you play glory or death is not fearful because like death is in the thing. It's like, this is going to go one or two ways and I'm kind of like open to either, um, which I think is amazing. And I don't think is how most people would play, but I also think in us survivor, it's harder to play glory or death because you go for the glory plan and like, there's probably something in your way. So it behooves you in many ways to pull back. So I think in terms of the constriction, in terms of the randomness and possibly in terms of the type of players that they're casting, where like they care so much because it's their dream and so much is on the story of the dream um that they have you know a lot on the line that means maybe we don't go for glory or death because maybe that death part's not so okay to us um i think all of that probably works into it so it maybe it's a bit of everything but i do think it's interesting like if more people go into e e any franchise with the idea of glory or death i think mm -hmm. for many it will fail because i don't think like everyone's george but i think it's an interesting idea of that that's just like that's my win condition like glory or death and we'll see how it goes. And, and in the US, maybe it's it's not possible, but like, I'd love if that was like people coming out with like the George mantra that is we're going to just, you know, swing for the fences. Because so many people well, with you, George, I think were like, should George be pulling it back? Even Tony pulled it back in Winners at War. And I feel like that was just never an option for you. Yeah. Um, hmm, uh, like, I, I don't know. Like there, there, there are ebbs and flows, obviously. Like, you know, it's not, it's not just making a move for the sake of making a move. There's got to be a purpose behind it. But yeah, um, I, 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 I just think like you, you it, it's hard when the tribe start with six. That's just what I'll say. Having lived through that situation twice, it, it's just basically one alliance controls it full stop. And um, it's, it's, it's a very different situation. And I, I don't know what, if that's why, you know, Jeff probes to keep splitting up the merge tribe because these people are only used to playing with six or less, <laughs> but it, it's like, it's, it's very different running numbers on a tribe of 13 or 12 or 11 than these on a tribe of six. And then uh, I would actually say it's much easier to get into the numbers because then you don't have to spend as much time and energy on investing into as many people. Like it, it's, and, and, and then it's just like a, a question is it's like, 
I, you know, you asked before, it's like, oh, would I do a bit differently on US Survivor? It's like, well, I don't know. The game mechanics are a lot more random, but I, I know how I am with people. And it's just like, you know, it, it, it's like I would, I would, I would get to know the people. Um, if that would only be a tribe of six, there's not many people to get to know. You know, there's always kind of outliers in terms of people that don't have a group mentality or the right intention or the right priority or, you, you know, it, you know, you you identify opportunities and weaknesses and flaws and then. You, you make people a deal. So it's like, is it hard to make a deal with six people? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's much harder to make a deal with 13 people. Yeah, I, I think that with the US stuff, it's almost like um, if they could sort of like uh, get this idea across of like, hey, like uh, the game is so random, you're probably going to lose anyway. You might as well just go for it while you're there. But I feel like that because like if the game is so chaotic and so unpredictable, I feel like that players are sort of like all having this idea of, okay, well, I'm just going to wait it out. I just need to like make one, one move right at the end. And everybody's sort of like, okay, let's just wait it out, wait it out, wait it out, wait it out. And then the production, I think gets frustrated. Like, Oh, they're just trying to wait it out and get to the end. So now let's just dump more stuff in there to make them have to do it now. And even if they don't want to, we're going to put stuff in there to force them to do it. Uh, but still not necessarily like the killer mentality that we're seeing from the players. Yeah, I mean, do I like what happened on episode seven of season 44? No, I'm not going to lie. But it's like, I, I, I also think... There was think no episode like, seven of Australian Survivor. Yeah, yeah definitely not. Seven this year. Yeah, that really you know. hit me that I was like, wow, that is like the chasm of, of quality right now. So it, it's just like, no, I'm not, I'm not liking that. You know, I definitely don't like the extra director vote, whatever it was at the end. And because I'm just mm -hmm. thinking, it's like, well, who... Who can bloody vote at this tribal council? But then, then I just tell myself, like, you know, it, it, it's like, uh, 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 are they are they predicting it's going to play out like this? It, it's just like they 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 can't really do that. There's a random rock draw, so they are they are hoping for potluck from a production perspective. But it, it's just like, you know, if 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 I if I look at it from like the heroes v villains episode seven. So, you know, you, you, you will tell yourself, what are the producers predicting is going to happen here? They've got this challenge that, you know, is, has been predetermined. In their mind, they're going, oh, Simon's probably going to win here. And the players are targeting Simon. So it's like in, 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 in their mind, they're probably thinking this is going to be a really interesting tribal council. Um, probably didn't predict the way it would unfold. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it's just like, yeah, I, I, I don't know what, like, what, what would, what would have been the intent of that season 44 episode seven? Like that, that is when I sometimes think like from a production perspective, what, like, what, what do they think the players are going to do in this situation? So you can't, you can't be too extreme where it's kind of like just random things happen for the sake of happening. Like, would I, would I want my alliance split up? on a bad rock draw? No, I actually think that's terrible. But like, if, if it looks like they're doing that, they should have just gone to two tribes of two, uh, like to two tribes of like six and five, you know, why, why mm -hmm. even merge? Yeah. Yeah. I think we're all on the same page now. Production is the problem. <laughs> I think we got, we got there. No, I mean, I definitely see um, parts of, of in terms of, you know, fandom homogenous casting, but I still think we, we don't know enough like about it because the game is the main character. But anyway, why are we talking about US Survivor? I feel like we this this podcast um creates unscripted that. rants. Yeah. Let's yeah. what's next? Well, what we have we... questions. Rob, should we ask oh, questions? Oh, go, go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah please. Well, well, obviously the first one was about how how you think you'd do in in US Survivor, but I feel like that's basically been covered. It would be glory or death, right? So we yeah. But oh, yeah. it's it's hard to know. It's like, how did I think I was going to do in Samoa? Like, it, it's you honestly, you deal with the cards you dealt with on the day. Like, you can't you can't do anything else. I had everyone pregame against me under the sun imaginable in Samoa, and you know they all got egg on their face. Fuck them. Mm. <laughs> so well, it's you... like that's the attitude that I'd have. That's the mm -hmm. that's you know, the, yeah. I'll, I'll walk in there with a 
F them attitude if I ever play again. Yeah. But I'm happy you, to just go if back. If you to ever the, play again, George, how yeah. many more times are you going to play? Oh, who knows? I'm, I'm, my body's still wrecked, Rob. You know, I know, I, I know. You and you went through a lot, and, and you know what I also really appreciate about you, George, is that you are a, a tough son of a bitch. Then and I, I don't say that lightly, George. That I really do think that you know people underestimate just how tough you are, and, and I really admire that. I feel like that you have so much tenacity that I feel like that in you know. For you to hold on in that challenge for what? How many hours did you go? What four, four and a half hours at the end? Is this the last one with yeah. a torn shoulder? And I get yeah. a shoulder challenge. It's like, yeah, things are designed to really help me, aren't they? <laughs> it's just, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's incredible. After yeah, fifty it's... days. Yeah, I, I don't know. It was just kind of like it, it's like I'm just praying to God. There's just a generic obstacle course how u.s survivor finale challenges are or simulsion you know just anything but a sh- yeah anything but a shoulder challenge do you know, like do, do you know i think of that challenge it's like i i remember the day before because when i fell off that balance beam it was just completely aggravated what the box did to me um this was at the final five immunity challenge when i fell off i'm actually shocked they showed it but um, anyway, so after I fall off that balance beam, that just for just to just someone please provide a freeze frame of the width of that Australian balance beam compared to what everyone on Survivor 44 just had on their balance beams because it, it would just it would it would make me sick because like the Australian one is like that wide and then the US one is like that wide you know but uh, so it, it's just like I remember joking heading off to the interview like when they're going oh. And, how do you think they talk about the challenge or the usual, you know, finale pre questions you get? And I remember going, as long as it's not a shoulder challenge, I'll be good. And then, like, the producer, she never gave anything away. But then when I saw her, I'm like, oh my God, it's a shoulder challenge. <laughs> I could barely straighten my arm. So, yeah. It's interesting. I was thinking in terms of um, you playing US Survivor, the two seasons of Australian Survivor you played are so different. Like you, I feel like you played two very different versions of the game. Like they're so specific in their own way. Like heroes versus villains, we felt obviously not alums, but way more space. But then mm. you're like a returnee in this half half season, this like extreme theme, and it's a final three. Like very different. Brains versus brawn is no spoilers, as as Rob will see. Like a very specific season in the way it goes about things. So I feel like the way you handle those two things to get to the end shows that you can play different types of games because even though they were both Australian Survivor and Forty Seven Days. They were like extremely different seasons, um, just in terms of like production. So mm. it's an interesting one, but it's still not US Survivor. Um, I- I'd like to see it. I think if anyone could kind of like overwhelm the twist to the point of success, I think you could. But in a in a world where like people in numbers and armies are things that you like create so well, mole votes, all the things that are like social strategy, with something clamping down on that, I'd be interested to see obviously how you would go. Um, I think U.S. Survivor would be the better for it, obviously, having you on it. Um, Am asked on Twitter, upon viewing the season from home, were there any key alliances that George was unaware of from within the game that had he known about them, would he adopted a significantly different strategy at any point? Did anything surprise, I guess, like more broadly, what surprised you watching it back? Because you, you know, so much of it was your story. The only thing I didn't know that had happened was Simon burning my hat. Yes. Like everything else, I know what happens. I'm... Like, it, it, it's just like, how could you be out there and not know there's an alliance working the numbers against you? It's like, this is why people get voted out. It's like, yeah. So it's like, no, nothing surprised me in terms of the politicking on my side or the other side or the other tribe or against me. It's like, I was completely across it all and it all factored into my decision making. The yeah. only surprise I had was it was a final three and not a final two. Yeah, we got questions about the hat, how you found out. I think, I believe I spoiled that for you when I watched it a couple of days early, right? No, I think, I I, think the, I, no, no, it wasn't you. It was, um, so I had a, I just had a general check-in call just about the first episode because that's when my injury happened. And then right at the end of it, I think the person that was just doing the check-in said, oh, and, oh. and don't forget your hat gets burnt. And I went, when did my hat get burnt? Right. <laughs> what did you think happened to the hat? It just blew away. I just thought I lost it. Like, you know, like I did a few other things. My lava mm-hmm. lava, I lost. 
That would have been a great souvenir. Maybe that I got Simon from. also burned that. What if there was no, a subplot I, that I didn't make the it, air no, where did. Simon's burning no, all your stuff? <laughs> I think I think Simon was a thief out there. He stole so many things. Yeah, so <laughs> mm-hmm. I I've, I have no doubt, like, in his basement, he's got my lava lava. Wait, what's a lava of... lava? Oh, the blue, the blue Samoan dress thing. Okay, I got to Google that. Yeah. A lava lava. It's like a sarong. Okay. Do you need a, Do you have sarongs? You know, do you have sarongs? <laughs> I, I know sarong. Okay. Yeah. I've so, never heard lava lava before you said it either, to be honest. Oh, so it I'm, must be it's a Samoan word, I think. Thing or, yeah. No, it's a it Samoan could, word. Yeah. When I watched yeah. that um what was it, episode 3 early, I I called you and I was like, "Do you know that you had got burnt in the fire?" Like that was like my first cuz a yeah. lot of people asked if Simon paid you back for that hat. Do you get a snuffed it, hat? He gave least? me two of his hats. It's Good, like yeah. that would have that would have paid for my Hearts of Reality donation, you know? Compare mm-hmm. the pair. <laughs> well, yeah, your hat, yeah, if you had been able to auction it off. Exactly right. Yeah. And he knew that, like, everyone yeah. knows just... I'm auctioning off my clothes, which yeah, I shortly will if you're listening. That please... hurt, Simon. <laughs> yeah, please support yeah. those dying children. But yes. George doesn't care about the kids with cancer. He's made that extremely clear. <laughs> I do when I fly across the world to support them. Yes. All right. Yes. That was it. That was, I shouldn't have said it as broadly as but that. He doesn't care about the kids 30, with cancer when in, they grow up to be on Survivor. In 30 years time, when they go on Survivor yeah. and they go, this is the only interesting thing about me. 30 that's years ago, I had cancer. No, that's not interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, imagine I like we've talked about this think, on a podcast. Like, before. what do they do on US Survivor when they're in camp? Like, maybe Rob, you know, it's different back in the day for you, but yeah. are there That's six fine, people though. sitting at like Tika Beach just comparing cancer stories? Is like, is that what these people are doing? Oh, and when I was eight, I had this oncologist, <laughs> and then they sit in silence while they yeah, try that's and good, develop that's a good a personality. Question. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think most of us have sympathy to have sympathy to the kids with cancer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, it's like I'm definitely going to work with you now in this alliance. We had we, a similar we have, oncologist. Yes, we have shared uh, adversity. Yeah, uh, you, a lot of people would say about Australian Survivor, do people just sit around and say, "I'm a political operator." Well, I'm a pain specialist. Like in, in Australian Survivor, the casting is not on story, but on like strange profession. Both of the no. franchises can be wrong. But for a handful of people, Shannon, we all have a personality. Okay. Well, people, again, depending on the season, might disagree with that as yeah. well. <laughs> I've said that I felt like over the last couple of years, I feel like that when Australian Survivor starts up a season, they do try to like highlight a person sort of like what, what their superpower is uh, and mm-hmm. tell you like why each person is like a good person that will be able to win the game with their particular skill set whereas survivors specifically in the new year i think has really leaned into what has this person overcome to get here what is their why for being here as opposed to their how from their specific skill set yeah i think that that's probably like a fair point you know so it's like you, you you do get exceptions to the rule there have been some fascinating characters come out recently um, I think I think 42 has probably been my favourite one more mm-hmm. recently in terms of having a strong cast. Um, but, like, yeah, so it, it, it's, like, sometimes it's just, like, it's a, it's a twofold approach. Like, it's an, there's an interesting person or they play the game interesting or you do both. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I think on US Survivor, more often than not, with 90% of what they're putting on there, right now they're not an interesting person. They're not playing the game interestingly, and they're doing neither. And that's a horrifically bad combination. And, like, you know, you've got maybe producers right at the last minute going, oh, we've cast another potato. The only way to <laughs> fix it is with a rock, you know? Don't See, though, this is what George Shannon. would be doing in, um, if he was cast. He'd be in the confessional calling them potatoes, and they're missing out on that right now. I don't know <laughs> if they'd love it, but <laughs> mm-hmm. you've cast potatoes. Um Yes. Potatoes have uh, well, skin. <laughs> yeah. Am I a potato? Don't even, yeah. don't even get into it. Um, well, we people asked, or Dead asked about, you know, if there was anyone that you had wanted to play with that you were disappointed wasn't there. Um, I know that Matt Farrelly was definitely offered a spot and because his WWE career is going really well. So um, he told me that when I 
met him at Hearts of Reality last year, and I know it's true. So I think that would have been fascinating because um, I'd never met him before or spoken with him before, but he's from he's from the southern suburbs of Bankstown. So I think we would have had a, a lot in common to get along with and play well. But aside from that, like everything else was probably just fandom rumor stuff. There wasn't anyone really that was offered a spot and declined it. So it, it's it's just like, um, you know, the, the, there was the probably only... some people considering there were 11 returnees. I'm sure they wanted, you know, a no, solid you, around you, 12. You, you'll be surprised. No, I think they, I think they don't really, they're not really fixated on a particular number, but um, they went in like... with like 11, 13. That's going to be, that's good. That's, that's going to be fun. That's, that's symmetrical. I don't know. I have OCD, so I don't love, well, <laughs> I don't think I that know... they were going 11, 13. I, I know who Simon replaced and it was a newbie. So it would have been completely different. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's, it is interesting. So it wasn't, it wasn't, there's no returnee that as far as I'm aware, pulled out last minute and had an offer. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's just like the only person is, is Jackie. Like it would have been great to play with Jackie. So yeah. I, I know she was there and it got taken away from her, but like, uh, I, I think seeing Jackie play would have been great because, mm-hmm like a real cunning poker play on risk taker like her will make a good TV product. So do you, if you like, I know Jackie really well, we've hung out in real life, you know, since as well. So it's just like, you know, when, when you sit at her, you're going to go, oh, she going to pop on camera. No, but she, she's got the, she, she's got the, she's got the gameplay and the political, like kind of like thinking mindset and the, 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 the poker kind of guts that that gives you to to make a really good TV product. And that would have made Jackie an interesting TV character. So it's just like, I I, I, I think that's kind of like, you know, that that's a kind of like a missed opportunity there. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Jackie. Poor Jackie. George, could you talk a little bit more about the training uh, that you went through to get ready for Australian Survivor? Because I thought that was uh, really incredible listening to your re- podcast with Shannon where you talked about just how hard you work to get ready to go. Yeah, so from um, from about 12 weeks out, I started paying my gym to um, cook all my meals for me. So um, I, I stuck with that pretty solid. Um, they put me on some like breathing device where they worked out my, um, like nutritional intake was like 1700 calories, um, to, to like lean up, which is what my plan was to lean up and muscle up, not bulk up like Carson did. I didn't go on some Mm -hmm. forced feeding routine. Like I've heard of all of those from Kez who tells me she just force feeds herself rice to build up. But I'm like, well, I don't think I can do that, but I can put on, um, more strength and more balance because they're the only things that were going to help me in the in the grand scheme of things. So um, I was doing CrossFit five to six times a week uh, for that whole twelve week period with my food being kind of like prepared for me. And um, yeah, I shed I, I I shed probably like I I dropped five kilos overall, um, but at that same time I think I put on like four or five kilos of extra muscle. But this was until I hit Samoa because once I did and we had like a, a pre-production lockdown period, I, I think my brain just switched off because I was eating six eggs, triple servings of bacon and four slices of bread for breakfast every day while we were out there. And then I put on like four kilos of fat. So I'm glad that mm-hmm. I did though because I probably needed it. <laughs> yeah. It's the one thing that you can take with you into the game. That's like an advantage uh, that more people like, uh, you know, you, you, to have that on your body is like you bring it into the game. Uh, like uh, you'll kill yourself to like uh, you burn like uh, 2000 calories to try to win, you know, um, a candy bar. Uh, but, you know, the fat you could bring into the game. <laughs> yeah, I was I felt great when my body fat was melting away. It's like. You know, we only had two meals in 10 days, like two portions of rice um, Mm -hmm. in in between those cookies because we couldn't get a fire going. So it was like, yeah, that body fat was just shred, shred, shredding away in Samoa. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a lot of questions as well about your book, George. Uh, What is your book about? Your upcoming book? Oh, my book's stressing me out, Shannon. Let's... uh... 
It's it's uh it's got to get moving, inshallah. Yes. Does it have? Is there yeah. like a? Is it your life story? Like I don't. What is the book? What is it, do we have a? Is it your advice on different I, topics? I, um, yeah. It will. It, it will be more kind of like a a self help book on how to um win friends and manipulate people. Oh well, mm. I, I'm gonna buy the first copy, George. I've, I've got to get to my book. Before. Yes. It, it um, gets me. Yeah. You Will you do an audio book version? Yes, if it gets done. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, loving That's... that. Um, a lot of people wanted to know the KG rules. I think that people are interested. What about what's happening with the Chivy tattoo? What are we doing with that? I thought we had you? a. I thought we had a plan, Rob. Aren't we both getting it? Uh, we're both coming... getting. I'm not getting a Chizzy tattoo. <laughs> I'm not getting one either. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Rob, you should also get one with George if George is going to be nice enough, exactly, and I'll yeah, pay for yours, like, and you can pay for how George. How long is it going to take me to explain to my wife what the hell the Chizzy is? Well, she should know, Nicole. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I'm actually got to send George's mug. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but George, no, I, 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 I am yes. that, but I'm, I'm that you, you said that you're going to be in Florida, uh, and I, I will, I, I will get down there. I will do, I will do that. Uh, that <laughs> it would be very uh, meaningful to me to get the chance to see you in person. So to both, yeah, to both get a tattoo. I'm yeah. not getting it. I'm not getting a, a, a chizzy tattoo. Well, you I heard heard it here. He said it'll be meaningful to do it. Let's. Let's put that on the record. <laughs> yes. And I'll come to Florida too to watch you both get, I'm not coming to Florida. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't want to, uh, you know, gush uh, too much here on the podcast, but, you know, I would, uh, that would be incredible to get, you know, if you're going to fly halfway around the world, I feel like I can get to Florida. Yeah, do it. And then we'll get that cheesy crown. Is that it, is that what it is, a crown? Well, the crown it, is the mug. Everyone gets a mug. You, I thought, maybe could get a tattoo, and I thought mm -hmm. Rob would pay for it. And I thought maybe once Rob is there, you'd be like, I'll do it too. And yeah. then you'd both have cheesy I'll tattoos. pay for a tattoo if you – I yeah. mean, I, I'd rather no I'd rather just get dinner. But if if, <laughs> if you want a tattoo, I'll pay for a Can tattoo. I just say, people think this is random, but I thought Applebee's was fantastic. Yeah. He's going for the Applebee sponsorship. Mm -hmm. I don't I – don't, I didn't know what it was up What'd until you have? I went there. I had some like probably like blue cheese chicken or something mm -hmm. and just like lots of food. What's but better, might... Applebee's or KFC? Oh, KFC mm, in question. Australia, for sure. Yeah. Is but KFC okay. better Although, in Australia Rob, than, than – I've, in... I've got told – I've never tried KFC in the US. But here's the thing. I'm cheating on KFC. I'm oh. going through. I'm going through a Hungry Jacks phase, Rob. That's Burger well, King. Say Burger that. King. Yeah, it used to be Hungry Jacks, right? I know. I know. Yeah, I know. And so now it, because it, because it's you have to if, keep it royal. It's, if, uh, is that if, what it is? If KFC want to buy my continued loyalty, they have to pay now. So it's like, pay up KFC, or I'll keep eating those South Carolina Whoppers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you is guys that what can it's go called, the South Carolina and, Whopper. Well, I know where, well, where South, is South Carolina, Carolina is. Yes, I'm not I know yes, where okay, it is. Let me explain it to you, Shannon. It's on the East <laughs> yeah. Coast. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, every time that joke like that's that is that is that insensitive that that's now like an like an ongoing whatever any place in America is is said, that's the joke. I mean like, pretty much. Yeah, if you were gonna like make a rogue reference, I don't think that's the insensitive one. Yeah, well, it's part of it. Do you think anyway. Rogue is listening to this? Yes. That's, that's yes. Me, the now, shout, out, shout out to Rogue. She's actually been listening this whole time. Mm -hmm. Did Rogue well, watch any Hollywood. of the season? Does Rogue no, know she... who won the season? I will absolutely guarantee you she has no idea who half the cast were, let alone... The what, how does God feel about basketball. Rogue? Um, I think God likes Paige more than Rogue. Okay, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Chalk one up for Paige. TBD, <laughs> to, to be honest. I mean, well, I gotta know. I mean, God probably has their own criteria on that. But anyway, I think that I the think plan the is plan you go to Florida, you have American KFC to compare it, and that you both get fun. tattoos. Yeah. And you live stream it. Oh, yeah. And we can get a KFC tattoo as well. No, don't don't cheapen the chizzy <laughs> tattoo, George. Just, just chizzy tattoos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is yeah. there like concept art for this? Like, uh, yeah, so if you walk this. into the tattoo parlor, it's literally this. Oh, it's literally that. That's that. That's yeah. All of... yeah. 
Yeah, that That's was lucky. Big. Okay, Shannon is well, showing her shirt. No, it won't be as shirt. big as my it's, T-shirt. It's, yes, it's getting kind of chizzy. Can I can, that? George, I have a, a special shirt that I want to show you also. Can I? Oh, can yes, I? Can yes. I? Can I do a George oh, wow. move? All the shirt yes, can I do? Right can now. I do a George move and reveal it? Reveal it's 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 not an idol, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> what is okay. it? But this is something. Is, okay, is now it? I hope you're not upset with me oh. here. But what George, check so check out this. Oh, oh, that could be trademarked. Be <laughs> careful. Says, no, it's not. It's different. It's different. It's a different font. This is an RHAP original. They know <laughs> it all. Like, I'm very good friends with Liz and her partner. I'll be sending them a very stern. Te- no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they know. They know it all. Yeah, oh, that's true. It's Liz. different. They yeah. know it all. Yeah. I think the they know shirts are sold out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they sold out. They did really yeah. well. These are, so. this is a completely different letters and fonts, <laughs> colors. It's, like, it's not a based Perth, on that. It's not a Perth subculture. They know, they know it all. <laughs> Isn't that but good? I'm actually wearing one of my shirts. Yes. If wants to buy it. <laughs> glory, <laughs> glory or, or death. death. That's beautiful glory shirt. Glory or death. Yes. Okay, we all glory have shirts to sell, all right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Isn't it glorious? <laughs> yes. All right. George will get all of these tattoos, just like a sleeve of, of RHAP and George merch. Unfortunately, print. there's no shipping outside of Australia. So glory oh. or death. Well, that okay. feels like a that feels like a, it's a disappointment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. One day. I'll take a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> no? Uh, I'll, I'll pay. bring it to you when we have our dinner with Marianne. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so you, we're. I, I'm gonna see you in December. I'm gonna mm-hmm. make that. I'm gonna make that happen. That's a priority for me. That's on. My, that's a my bucket list, not my bucket of KFC, but that's mm-hmm. on my. That's on my bucket list to uh, meet with King George. And then, what like what goes on at the at these things? Are are you just like mobbed by like all of the reality stars? Will will, will I get to have any time with you, George? Oh, of course, because I, I actually, um, do you know what the most disappointing thing for me was? Because it's like, um, like y- you, well, I'll, I'll start on the good note. So um, it's a phenomenal event at Hearts of Reality. I had so much fun. Oh, no. gonna, Please don't say gonna the gonna downside is the sick kids. Please don't <laughs> say <laughs> the downside is the sick kids. No, no, they were great <laughs> to hang around with. Yeah. Um, That's the. No, know. that was very warming, Rob. So it was warming. like. I, I realize yeah. some some of your former castmates and colleagues have this kind of like entitlement around them. Oh yes. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. And but uh, the the not one Not me, person, George. No, not you. The one person who really, really disappointed me, Jerry Manthing. Oh, because, oh and she played in Australia. I George is coming out of this podcast cancelled, and as a proud tradition on the on the check in. Thank you, George, for continuing it on. I love Jerry Manthe. I absolutely yeah. loved her. She was just so like fun as a Survivor character, and then we were both on this poster, Rob. Okay, like I I don't know how, but I made the front of the Hearts of Reality poster last year. So I don't I, I don't expect people to know who I am either, but. I saw Jerry Manthe come out of a lift and I got all fanboy and I walked up to Jerry Manthe and I went, Oh my God, Jerry Manthe, my name's yeah. George. I'm visiting from Australia. Lovely to meet you. And she goes, all right, bye. <laughs> it's, it's like, I was like, Oh my God, the, the height of this woman. And then we were having a signing session. So it just got worse with Jerry, which was even more disappointing we're having a signing session, mm-hmm. and then every time she was signing her name, she was doing it on my face on the front page because I was in a more prominent position. And then I was just like, well, I can play this as well. So I just got black text her every time a fan was giving me the poster to sign yeah. and deliberately signing it on Jerry's face. And then wow. that was it. And then I unfollowed her on Instagram and I will never talk to her again. Wow. And I played a Jerry Manthe pokey that also had Rupert on it the day I turned like 18 at the casino and never again. Clock machine. Wow. And 
trying yeah, to and, translate and in the moment. I, I'm just glad that you, you one Jerry left your life and a new Jerry replaced because you found good. you yeah. you found your Jerry. Are you friends with her, Rob? You're not like close mates. I, or not, something, for, not close friends. We, we you know we were on a season together, George. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I, she's a, an, an acquaintance that I've you know known for t- you know twenty years, but we're not like uh, like exchanging like regular uh, messages. Maybe now you will be. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe based on this, <laughs> George. I might get one unfiltered. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Well, it's not Just my like podcast. Like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a good run. <laughs> It's interesting All right, well, how um, next question. I, I manifested that the check-ins would end the podcast. Mm-hmm. And in many ways, maybe they have. You mm-hmm. know? In, in many ways, that might be true. So mm-hmm. I'm glad I was here for the end. <laughs> Rob, steer the ship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, do, you, do you have more questions, Shannon, for George? I think I'm tapped out. Okay. I think I'm out. <laughs> What's what's next it. for you, George? Um, well, um, I am I am going to um, enjoy the next couple of months. I think um, yeah. I'm going to England for Eurovision in a few weeks, so that'll be oh, fun. Oh, wow. what? Do, how do you attend Eurovision? And just buy tickets and go. So that'll be fun. And um, I, I do have that travel planned at the end of the year as well. So I'm I'm looking forward to just enjoying the year. Um, getting back kind of into like the hustle of doing things and seeing how things unfold. So yeah. I do, I do have the book deal. Um, I do have a very short period of time to um, get the book going. Otherwise I might not be ready for its launch. Um, so yeah, so lots, lots of book, stuff yeah. is happening. So it's, it's, it's all exciting and fun. Are you retired from politics, George? Yeah, I closed that chapter um, formally in October last year. So I, um, I, 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 I hadn't worked as a staffer since like 2017 mm-hmm. and um, you know, when my, my life very fortunately for me went in a different direction after I played survivor the first time. And then I, I closed that chapter in, in October last year. So I'm not a, even yeah. a member of a political party anymore, okay. but so would can I... I ask you a philosophical question about politics mm. in general that, and I feel like that, you know, you talked about how you uh, there, that your worldview is not, very uncommon in the world of, of politics is that is that fair to say what do you mean sorry in terms of like your uh your mentality about uh you know being you know so frank and upfront about you know uh what you want and and how to uh you know best get the things that you are trying to do i just don't think i think people don't like unnecessary bull crap you know so mm-hmm. it's just like i don't I don't like politicians that spin crap. I'd rather yeah. be be told something and then you either like it or you don't, or you know, you you get convinced of it or you or you don't. So it's just like uh, I, I think that's what kind of is like more beneficial. But like we also have a very different political system here, Rob. It's not the kind of like um, it's a very different political climate as well than in the US. Sure. So. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't know if there's kind of like, I'm just a... always looking for some sort of a uh, glimmer of hope, George. And I just am wondering, like, uh, do, do we need people to have more of a George mindset in, in politics or do we need like a different mindset, uh, to help address different, uh, political issues that are challenges? Um, yeah, I, I, I think like in, in, in Australia, it works here. Um, I, I think there are like, you know, I, I would say like there are huge structural issues in American politics that don't lead to, you know, good decisions being made um, full stop. But so it, we don't have the good like, survivor or the good political system? Well, you know, when, when people don't get forced to vote, then you don't, pitch to the which middle. thing are you talking this is about literally yeah. both, of true of yeah. both things yeah so it's like we, we have had that comparison by the way australian survivor has people <laughs> and you have to vote that yeah. Is, that, yes. had that. So yeah it's okay. just well, like you, yeah. you have to vote in the vote is uh so, you know not yeah. uh not, yeah so not it's like, you know what i, I it, enjoy it, 
that we already cancelled the podcast. And then Rob was like, and now politics yeah I, i'm just i mean i'm not even talking about any issue no, i'm talking no, about like know, from a philosophical perspective like, yeah philosophically like australian political parties no matter where they fall on the political spectrum have to pitch to middle australia otherwise they become electorally irrelevant mm -hmm. um and then that doesn't necessarily happen in the u.s right so Right. You can pitch more to extreme bases. Nobody's and, advocating for the middle. Right. Yeah. And then like ordinary people tend to get left behind either way, which I'm sure is very frustrating to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, George, I could listen to you talk about any subject. Uh, I just think that you are such a fascinating person and I appreciate you so much as a television character. And I appreciate so much that you uh, made some time to talk on the podcast. Yeah, look, thanks. Thanks so much for having me. It's been uh, it's been fun. I think I'm finally calling it a day. So this is kind of a, a good Same. fun moment for me. So let's mm -hmm. end the um, let's end the uh, Heroes v Villains season with yes. this. And we want to get into, you know, doing a rewatch of your first season uh, once we get to that. the Survivor yeah. off season. I reckon Brains v Brawn is fun. It, yeah, it's. it's it's more, it's, it's, it's kind of like heroes v villains, but more Gabon. Mm -hmm. I get that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's fun. You yes. enjoy it. I, I am disappointed. Like I, I only got to see your first week in the real time. And we were doing, uh, uh we were watching a U.S. season a week during the pandemic. And so, uh, that I yeah. just did not have the bandwidth to be able to watch it in the real time. But I'm so excited to, uh, make that a thing this summer. Oh, do you know what got, this is going back now? Do you know who else would have been great on the villains tribe, but who? unfortunately they were having a baby? Danny Bill. What a great character she is. And you'll get to know her no from Yeah, you'll get to know her from Brains Be Brawn. But she 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 would have played as well, and she's just such a strong TV character and strong um, female personality. Like that is a warrior woman, someone like Danny. Mm -hmm. You know? That's what you for. should it. turn to on the internet, like a real good character like her. Great person. Well, well. Rob's going to meet them all. I feel like, so, yeah, this is not the end, actually. I do have something else planned for a couple of weeks oh. from now, but I'm, I'm just teasing it. I'm not announcing it. But George, otherwise, yeah. What else do you watch on TV besides Survivor? Anything um, else that we would know? No, I, I watch a lot of um, football. I do like sport. So that's that's soccer, as you call it in America. Mm -hmm. um, and and then just in terms of TV, I, I I I I have been trying to watch things in the like in in the like the space right now. So I'm trying to watch. I'm a celebrity when I have time, mm -hmm. when I have catch up, and um, you know I'll get into Master Chef when it starts in two weeks here. Um, I, I I don't have a lot of spare time, and then now I'm kind of getting back into a routine again. But I want to get back into playing poker again. Like, I haven't really played poker since I played a game with Jackie Glazier, ironically, at her tournament a week before the season started. So um, I want to get back into doing that at night because that's fun for me. Okay. George, where can people check out everything you're doing? Get a... Uh, Glory or death shirt, cameos. Yeah, oh, definitely cameos. Please book me on cameo. That's very important to me and to you and your loved one. Um, but you can follow me at King Georgia Banks down on Instagram. Um, you, there's a link in my bio if you want to support me through online merchandise. Um, also to my cameos and whatnot. And um, I'm not that active on Twitter, but it is at King George two two double o double two double o. Yeah. Okay. George, uh, such a pleasure. Uh, so I uh, really appreciate you making the time to do this. Thanks, Rob. And I know we've had a lot of random tirades. None no tirades. More, none more glorious than my Jerry Manthe story. <laughs> no, it's very I'm glorious. looking into me if it doesn't get cut from the podcast, yes. in which case everyone listening is like, what Jerry Manthe story? Yes. All right. Uh, <laughs> Shannon, what about for you? Well, yeah, I mean, for, for the deep dives, I really recommend them all. Five plus hours with George, five plus with Simon, two extra minutes with Simon. Um, oh, which... oh, I was going to say something naughty. I shouldn't do that. Yeah. 
<laughs> How much of this podcast do we have to cut? No, when you said a two-minute deep dive, I just went, lol. Two minutes, two minutes, five minutes, five hours and 17 minutes. Two no, minutes No, no, I was more. thinking of someone else. Please go oh, on. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we, yeah, so we did George, Simon, Nina, Liz, and Matt. So those are the five deep dives. Highly recommend all of them. I mentioned Haley. She is not doing it because she got married. She went on a honeymoon and then she came back and she was like, I think that's done. Like, why, you know, dig up the past? So um, those are the five deep dives that we got. As mentioned, there will be something else, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Follow me at Shannon Gates. Subscribe to the International Survivor Happy I know Street, about so you don't this, it. don't I? Yes. I actually need to talk to you about it. Um, oh, yeah. So we're going to have another podcast interview in a couple of weeks. That and that's good. that. So, Shannon, yeah. well, we all commend you for your amazing service to International Survivor. You've done it once again. Congratulations Thank on you. five years of covering all of the International Survivor seasons uh, on Thank RHAP. You. Uh, you have done an amazing job over uh, this time and have uh, done uh, so much more than I even thought was possible uh, with than any human thought it was possible. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah, it's my life. This is my baby. This is this is all I have. No, I have I have I have a life. I'm gonna I'm remember what it is yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to Cairns next week um, mm-hmm. with with Marianne though. Sorry, Are you doing the bungee. No, Marianne reminded me that she doesn't bungee jump. She she has um she's scared of heights. Remember her on the block crying like ah and then jumping. I'm scared so she of heights. Want to I did jump. that bungee. You have no. to walk up like 65 meters. It's terrifying. Make sure she doesn't. I'm going to have to convert that for the American listeners. Like she's, we're not doing bungee jumping. She did make me with going white water rafting, which I'm okay. terrified for. They're like, you, you need probably... like a moderate level of fitness, which I don't have. I'm like, what happens if you don't? Are we going to die? Like, I I'm reckon no one has ever died bungee jumping in cans, but I guarantee you somebody's drowned white water rafting. How is that helpful? I just said we've booked it. The trip has been, it's booked. We paid money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. I'm going white water. Like I. It, anyway, so if I die, you it's know, a good run. Everyone, it's a good run. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you all so much for joining us uh, for this very special edition of the podcast. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.